my name is Savannah Newton, and I am here for the Black Barn Fine Art Studio. Um, today, I'm going to be interviewing Eileen Sorg, uh, main artist and owner of Two Dog Studio. Um, and they're launching this new endeavor with the Black Barn, and we're going to talk to her about it. And here we go. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on this today and agreeing to have an interview. And I know, like, everything is super duper chaotic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy time. And it's Halloween, also crazy time. So in my world, but yeah. Holiday season, quarter four, like everything just coming, coming to the yeah. end. Coming. It's good though. <laughs> it's all going to be good stuff. So, and it's always good to see you, obviously. Any, any chance I get to talk to you is very exciting for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hopefully everybody thinks the same. I'm not sure, but um, yeah. <laughs> no, I think I think everyone's going to be stoked, especially especially with the way that things have changed. And, you know, like we don't like there's so many of us that don't meet in person anymore that, um, you know, like this is the only time that we that we get to see each other because so know. much has changed since 2020. So so much and and before. So, yeah. Yeah. But we're going to have like a physical place now. Physical place, physical classes. So, yeah. It'd be so good. Um, so I do have a few questions and um, I'm really excited for us to kind of dig into your whole story. Um, and I'm sure everyone else is excited to hear that too. Um, so to start, I wanted us to kind of learn more about like, how did you actually become an artist? Because as long as I've known you, you've been, you've been Eileen Stor Sorg of Two Dogs Studio. <laughs> and um, so I know that there, there, there was there was life before that and you got to where you are. And I'd love to hear more about that. It's not, it's not that I wish it was a, a bigger, cooler story, but, um, so I was always doing art and I, and I still get, I still have people from high school even, um, that will pop up and go, Oh, I knew you'd get into, I knew you'd be doing art someday. You know, that usual thing. Um, not that I was particularly good at it, but I did it because I liked it. Um, but it wasn't practical. And I think it, my, my big regret is always been that, um, that I didn't actually get training, you know, like go into it for real, um, coming out of high school and, and in that time period. Um, but there was no, like, there wasn't really, a, that, at least on this coast, I felt like there wasn't really that atelier type thing that resurgence hadn't quite happened or I wasn't plugged into that happening. Um, and I would, so I, I went all with the practical and, and, um, went to work and then got my degree and did the wildlife biology stint. And that's where my training is, which does kind of knit back in to the work in its own way. But I always was, I always kept my hand in cause I enjoyed drawing and, um, definitely more of a drawer than a painter and, or I maybe, um, I, I'm kind of painting now, but I don't know. I just something about the line. I love, I love line. Um, and so, and it was portable because especially when I was working in as a biologist, it's very, you know, you're out in the field and whatever, you can't exactly pack all that gear. And so I just kept at it and kept playing with it and in amongst working. And then it slowly, um, you know, over, I guess it, at that point, maybe like 10 years had passed. Um, and then I, um, you know, I joined groups like the Color Pencil Society and, you know, kind of just stayed plugged in, did a co-op gallery, but I was still working um, and and managed to get a picked up from someone seeing my work in, at Walter Foster Publishing, got a book deal for, a, for like a how-to book kind of thing. And it gave me that kind of bravery, I guess, to, mm -hmm. okay, maybe I could... <laughs> you know, <laughs> practical me, you know, and I, pl I bought, and I bought the whole, you can't make a living being an artist, you know, thing, which was kind of the mantra. And, um, I thought, well, you know, if not now, when, so, um, so I went ahead and did it. And, and that was in 08, I think 08. Um, and it's just sort of grown from there, making tons of mistakes and not knowing, you know, what it meant to be a working artist, not having a real good sense of being a business owner. So bad. Um, yeah. Which, you know, we just want to draw pictures. Uh, so having to learn it all along the way and, uh, and just kind of, you know, find my place and, 
And then in the midst of that, finding my voice as an artist and what I want to say and what the work is going to be and um, building a, a body of work that was um, recognizable, you know, and, mm -hmm. and people would, would see it and go, oh, I know who did that. You know, it was always a goal for me. So, um, so it's just been this strange, um, unguided pa uh, pathway to, to where it is now, um, wherever that is. I, you know, I never really, you know, I'm just a a hermit in uh in her studio so you, it's always funny when people are like oh i know her you know or i i know that work and you're like oh no oh, like weird. how <laughs> yeah super weird um so so yeah so that's just kind of how it went and then it, if i think had there been a maybe a like an atelier type thing situation at that time i probably would have jumped in on that and who knows what that would have done and how that would have changed the work that mm -hmm. i do you know it might have totally you know maybe it was best that I did it this way and sort of pieced my own education together or whatever, but, but yeah. Yeah. Cause cool. your work is really, is really different. Um, and I love that you brought up your education. Cause I think um, I've actually been like thinking about this a lot where we're, where we've come to a time where, um, you know, people are, they have a ton of student loans and they're still like paying all that off. And they're like, usually typically these days not working in the field that they got their degree in. And so there's a lot of talk about like worth and the time spent and then the bills coming and, you know, money off the table, the just, you wouldn't know the anatomy and everything. Like you wouldn't know the subject that you're painting now, the way that you do if you hadn't had that education. And so even though it's maybe not what you're technically getting your pay from anymore, like it has influenced your life so much that it's still like, it's still valid. You know it's what I mean? Still, like, yeah. I, I, I think about that when I was like, when I was like paying off student loans, <laughs> right. And those texts every, but um, yeah, I don't regret it. I, I, uh, I, I do think, you know, at the time I wouldn't have thought that, but I do think, um, you know, all the hours I spent, um, uh, stuffing mice for the Burke museum and all of that, um, and studying, tra you know, just all of it, um, did significantly form kind of the way, I, the way I represent the, the, the subject matter in my work and how I kind of try to stay respectful with them, but, you know, still kind of show them as sentient beings and not, you know, just, cute little woodsy creatures and mm -hmm. some of them are naughty and so you know just like people you know there's <laughs> just good and the bad and all of that so yeah I'm, I'm pretty grateful that it it's so it's you know kind of sewn itself into the work in, in its own way even though I'm not well I don't really miss the whole living in a backpack living living with all your stuff in a backpack in a trailer with Bernie out in the middle of the field somewhere <laughs> sharing a <laughs> sharing a little gross trailer or something, all the field work stuff that we all do. So I don't miss that, but, um, but I do, uh, yeah, I do, I do miss some of the study, but I can still, you know, just walk around and go, you know, who's that that I just heard. So, so yeah, I'm glad that they knit together. Yeah. They knit together pretty well. And again, who, who knows if I hadn't done that, what I do, you know, it's, it's all so interesting to me how, you know, in hindsight that, yeah this is probably where I was supposed to be. It just didn't feel like it, it felt disconnected at the time, but mm -hmm. it is where I'm supposed to be in the, in the long run. So, yeah. And yeah. And I feel like, um, as far as like the atelier, I feel like the way that you, the way that you use your medium, like it is so different. Like, I know that other people are kind of starting to do similar stuff and everything, probably cause they're like, you know, going to Eileen Sorg, um, courses and everything, <laughs> but, um, like, until meeting you, I had never really seen that as, um, you know, a completed piece. I've seen it. Um, I've seen people using watercolor and, and colored pencil that way, um, for like sketching or, you know, as like a, as like a highlight, like a, like an accent, mm -hmm. but not like, um, but not the way that you really, the whole piece is just this, I don't know. You like, you feel like you're there because of like how extreme the realism is because of how much the colored pencil is embedded and like the depth that that creates with the watercolor. Could you talk a little bit about like how you kind of figured out that you wanted to do that? I I knew, like I say, I, I've always felt that there was like the two camps and I definitely fell in line with being a more of a drafts person and the drawing part of things. And I did a lot with pen and ink and a lot of with graphite. <clears throat> and then I realized 
um, you know, color would be, you know, it's, it was almost like I paced myself. Like I created my own weird little atelier, like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to learn how to draw in, but I'm going to stay with black and white, you know, and, and I'm going to work with the tones and what I can do with that. And then, Oh, okay. I kind of get that. Well, I'm going to, now I'm going to add, start adding color and go into that. And so, um, at the time it was pretty early on in the color, color pencil society and the, the color pencil world existed, but it was just kind of getting its teeth into the fine art world, I guess, because it really had been sort of um, kind of panned in the in the fine art world or the gallery world, right? And so I kind of jumped in the, you have to almost relearn a bit because the, the way color pencil moves or doesn't move really on the paper versus graphite, or it's very different. Um, and then having to think in color versus just, you know, um, the value scale and the gray scale. So it was a little bit of a learning curve. And then um, and then you come to that realization that it's super slow and you're, you're like, okay, I'm going to get one piece done a year. Yay. Like, um, so, in the hand. so, yeah. So at some point I was like, you know, I'm going to have to, uh, you know, I have a lot that I want to say, you know, I don't want to create some work. Um, how do I do this? And I, I, ha I don't even remember how I tripped over her, but I there was a class at the time being offered by Sue Ellen Ross, who, who was, who is a fabulous artist that we were lucky enough to, that she lives in West Seattle. Um, and she is a painter. She does one, wonderful watercolor paintings. Um, and it was very well established, had been a great, has a great career, had a long career when I met her and she sort of was doing this mix and she was heavy, heavy in watercolor. Um, very realistic uh, and she did this thing with a little bit of ink and then this watercolor, and then she would do some colored pencil with it. Um, but hers was again, really heavy in the watercolor. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that watercolor sort of terrified me. Um, but I was lucky and I, I was able to take a class from her. Um, and it was right about the time when she was getting ready to stop teaching too. So it was, it was really lucky. And she has sort of became this um, unofficial like mentor for me um, because it, it, well, what she was doing registered with me. And I think she, you know, she taught a lot, but there's, and I, now that I teach, I understand it. There's always certain students that you can tell, like get it. And, mm -hmm. and I understood what she was doing and um, was fine. You know, some, a lot of people thought it was just too, um, complex and it was just like ah and um I did, it it made sense to me so I took her you know she was the person that turned the light bulb on in my head that said I I can use other mediums together and and make this work and still be able to you know get the result that I want and use the mediums that I want but have it make more sense and not take forever so I extrapolated from her and do what I still don't do as much with, I don't do near as much with watercolor as she does. I tweak it because um, I'm more comfortable in the pencil end of things. But um, so I kind of um, morphed her method over into what makes sense for me. And that's what I always tell my students too, is, you know, it's, it's really whatever you, um, whatever you want to spend the most time. If you're happy or watercolor and you just want to tweak it with a little bit of pencil and you can go ahead and do that way. Or you can, you know, it's very, um, pliable and there's no point in doing something if you don't like it so you know if you, if you don't like watercolor that much just do a little bit of it and lean on the other ones so that's how it kind of evolved um and uh, that's been quite a few years and i'm so grateful for that just sort of random again like you know it's like oh mystical like the universe is driving things but it felt it did feel that way um and we're still friends to this day, you know, that she, and she's, yeah, a lot. If you look her up, somebody, everybody should look her up because her work is, is great. Um, so yeah, so that's where it's at now. And then I, I've slowly started to add in, you know, working with oils just to break that whole, like, I'm not a painter, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that mantra that we, um, so I'm kind of playing with that too, but, um, I still like, I love line. I, I still love the, um, you know, wh whether it's, you know, an etched line or um, just drawing or I don't know, just the beauty of line work. So pencil will always be my kind of my home place, I guess. So it's been fun to watch um, to, to see your newer oil pieces, too, though, because, um, you know, because your your practice and your dedication is in 
that detail, that detail work then that comes through in your oils as well. So it's like, you know, when you see oil paintings, you're kind of used to seeing things being like, yeah, kind of like more loosey goosey and not all the time, but you know, a lot of the time. Yeah. And, um, and so yours, like, it's like illustrated in oil, you know? Yes. Like, it was, it's weird. I, when I started doing it, I, um, I thought, Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do oils and I'm gonna have a different style you know, inherently I'm going to have a different style. And I, I had all the copper laying around anyway from, um, from doing the etchings and things that I had been playing with there. And I thought, well, I'm going to, I had seen this really cool exhibit, um, up in, uh, Canada for, uh, it was a Flemish exhibit and they had, so they've been painting a whale on copper for centuries, but you didn't really see it now. And the ones that these paintings I saw that were like 400 years old, they were just beautiful on copper. So I thought I'm going to do that. Um, and so, and it mimics paper for me, right? So it's very smooth copper because even, even a really smooth, um, linen, um, is got tooth to it and it was sort mm -hmm. of foreign to me, you know, cause I'm so used to smooth paper. So the copper was like, oh yeah. So then I end up doing this piece and I, and I'm literally drawing with a brush. Like it's just, you can't, you, you, you can't tell the difference from, I couldn't, I only know cause I was there. But the style is the same. It was it was the weirdest thing. I thought for sure. Oh, no. so you know, I enjoy them. They're different. It's different way of thinking when I do them. But mm -hmm. it is it was just the weirdest thing to be like, no, it's you know your style is going to come through no matter what you do. So you know, get over it. So <laughs> <laughs> they're also super breathtaking in person though. Like you can kind of tell like on the prints online and stuff. Obviously, I'm from afar, but I think I got to see two of your earlier ones like it was right before I moved away from your area um and you had done two and seeing that copper reflect through the paint and in any like little bits of gas like it's such a it yeah. looks they just kind of glow from within it's really yeah it's really something. super cool I'm surprised more people aren't doing it I I tripped into that too because um another artist right Kent Lovelace was doing that and I got to take a class from him and I I really just it wasn't so much for the style although his work was his work was phenomenal. Um, he's a landscape guy. Um, but again, you know, I'm piecing my education together, right? So I'm like, oh, I'm going to take, you know, Sue Ellen didn't do what I did either. And and um, this guy's doing landscapes, which is as far from what I do as you can get. But he was doing it on copper. And I'm like, okay, this guy's going to teach me how to, I really needed to know, like, fundamentally, how do I prepare that surface? And um, how do you frame it? You know, all these little nuggets from him. And um and I ended up getting a, into a class and I think he, I mean, he ended up passing away like, like within a year of that class. It was just like oh. timing is everything. Um, and so, yeah, it's a lovely medium at that, the way it does kind of blow through and how, how much you allow to show and not show. And then of course the smooth surface and yeah, I, I'm other than the cost of it, you know, and it's a little bit heavy. It's just, I don't know why people, more people don't do it, but yeah, it's good for me. It's just another way of just being a little bit, um, out of the main lane or traffic, I guess. So just mix it up sometimes. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so, um, as far as subject matter, cause obviously, um, you have a very specific, like people know your work, you know, as soon as they see the characters and I know like it's, you know, it's been like that for a long time, but looking at some of your earlier, um, things that even like, um, when I was looking at this morning was the trouble with butterflies and like, there's a story, like there's, there's, there's characters in there, but you look at some of your more recent work um, and there is like, I know that people have tried to convince you to write like a children's book. And I feel like your work is the book, like your, um, your, the completed piece is the whole book on just one is on one page. Like you have the, there's, there's characters, there's plot, there's like, everything's happening. So I'm like wondering how, um, how that came about, how you decided where you're like, I can do these beautiful creatures and then like these whole creatures have each one has a personality like you said like some of them are naughty and some of them are not and I'd love yeah. to hear more about that it's the 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 morph of the or the 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 way it's all just kind of changed over time has been kind of interesting even for even for me um because it, you know like I was saying you know when I was first starting out I didn't I just was drawing and there was no real like um themed anything but it was that was that period of time when you, it, for all artists where you're just trying to learn how to use it 
you know, how to use the medium, you know, what are you doing? Um, and then I just kind of did a little tiny story and it was really the start of it was genealogy, which is a piece I did at the very beginning. And it's a stack of books with a little wren on it, but the books are about, obviously about, you know, birds of the Northwest, you know, it's just a very tiny little story. It's very safe. It's a safe little story. And there's just not, and that was that moment of like, Oh, I kind of like telling that, you know, bit of a story on top of just something that's aesthetically pleasing to me. And so it sort of grew from there and you can sort of see this progression, um, where, um, like you say, Trouble with Butterflies was, it was very, it was pretty early on in that time period. And there's a story, but it's a little, you know, it's subtle. There's not a lot of little characters. And then you get all the way to the other end, um, where now there's, you know, like the, like, uh, have a drink on me or, or fruits of your labor. Or some of those guys, um, there's just a lot of little dudes in there and there's a much bigger story. And, um, I'm working on one right now with an octopus and there's like, um, you know, each arm, there's eight little stories going on in there because each arm is doing something different. And, um, so it definitely like, it grows and it's sort of like you free yourself up from um it's like you the crack you crack that door a little bit genealogy you kind of crack that door and then it just slowly starts to open kind of like the uh, narnia's closet or whatever right <laughs> um and so it's kind of fun because you never know you know for, and because i don't really have a real control over them either which i think is weird it's weird for me to say that. <laughs> it's just like, well, then who, then who does have control of it? You know? But I don't like to sit down and go, okay, I'm going to think of a drawing right now. And it doesn't work that way. So they come out of, they don't, I don't dream them either. They just, they just a little nugget or somebody will say something and it'll kind of trip something for me, or I'll be just doing something stupid like laundry. And I'll think, well, that would be but you know, just a little piece of that story will kick in. And then it, as it kind of percolates, it grows and grows and grows. So I wish I had that, like, sometimes I wish I had that ability to just go, okay, I'm going to sit down and think of five awesome drawings right now and have these, you know, all fleshed out. It doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. But, but yeah, I do like to take them. I like to, I like there, there's a huge theme in the, in the body of work that I don't remember consciously ever thinking about, which if you, if you look at it, you you can see it's happening. There's this theme of cooperation, working together um, to solve a problem, or you know things like that. And that that one that's probably the biggest theme. And there's a little bit of um, you know like David and Goliath kind of moments too, of like you know being strong but you know small but mighty, you know kind of power of self esteem style where you're like this little tiny hummingbird up against these two big crows. So there's these odd little themes and that's why I think they, they do lend themselves to a story within each one. Um, and, and I often get asked that, that children's book thing. And, and I definitely feel like there will be, I'll, I'll, I definitely will be doing it. You're just going to have to block out that huge amount of time and um, to illustrate 32 pages or whatever it would, you know, what traditionally is, and then try to figure out if I want to, step foot into that like whole industry or just like do my own thing. I don't know, but yeah, I have a story. It's, it involves a chipmunk. It's going to be very cute. Oh. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah. So that, yeah, they eat, I get that a lot, you know, like, Oh, you, you know, you could, this one piece, you could create a whole children's book story and it's, um, it's weird. I, I don't know. I would never, you know, me, the one who never had kids, you know, <laughs> the one that was like, Oh, kids. Cool. You stay there. <laughs> <laughs> let's make art for kids or let's make stories for kids who knew i don't know well and i think that even though it's for kids like that just means it's accessible right so it's not that it's necessarily for kids you're just kind of in touch with that like innocent part of humans like we're all you know we're all just grown-up kids like we're just older kids True. and we want we still want the adultier adult and so it's like i feel like you're kind of speaking to to everybody because everyone everyone still likes stories and everyone wants a break from life. Like we all want to be, we all want to be in that space, you know? So yeah. I don't, I don't feel like you have to be a parent to know, you know, what you would have loved as a kid, what other people needed as a kid and what kids need. Like yeah. we, we all need it. I think it's fair. And I, I mean, I still, if I still find an old like Beatrix Potter book, I've got to buy it or whatever. Cause that was my, that was my thing. And I certainly channel her work quite a bit subtly and like a like 
for, again, Fruits of Your Labor is a relatively new one. And that one's got, I, I ripped off of her so much in that one with the colors and the, you know, it, it's subtle, but, but just doing the colors and people, people resonate with that piece. And I'm always like, you're a Beatrix kid. <laughs> you grew up on Beatrix. Pay attention to that. Yeah, I, got a little, I got a little anthology actually um, for my eldest because I knew that you love Beatrix Potter and I had never read that when I was little. And so I was like, well, I want to read it. I want to, I want my little girl to read it. So, so lovely. So lovely. Everything about it. And I, you know, and, and we're different because like you know, that biology part of me won't let me put little clothes on them or like, you know, or put little hats on them or anything. I can't do it. I can't. Um, and she does, but I, I don't know. There's just something about the way she, I don't know. She just treated them very respectfully and gave them, gave them personalities. And again, some were naughty, some weren't, you know, I mean, no. I, I just liked that. And I think there's a lot of that that so soaked in, in some way. So yeah. when you're, um, when you're deciding which characters are naughty, does it, um, does your biology background like come into play heavily on the species? For sure. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, there's certain animals and I haven't drawn a lot of them, but there's certain ones like, um, it's odd, but porcupines, you know, I keep wanting to do a porcupine because they, they're really actually cute. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it. And, but they're so sweet and <laughs> nobody would think, you know, but when you actually handle them that they're, they're just, they're super sweet. And then you get into like, well, obviously we all know like the hummingbirds are pretty, pretty wicked. They can be, you know, they're so cute looking, but they're pretty wicked. Um, Chipmunks and squirrels, we all kind of, and crows, we all know they're, you know, that's a more, it's easier. Um, anything in the weasels, I love all the weasels, but you know, they're weasels. And so they're really fun because they're, you know, they're usually pretty, they're saucy. So I, I like the spicy characters quite a bit um, for, and you know, again, like the ones, the unexpected ones where you've got a hummingbird doing something naughty because people just, for some reason they get a pass. <laughs> yeah. People let them get a pass for all their behavior probably because they're little, but they're, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the whole point, you know, it's just tweak on the, the way that the nature of things, I did a whole like summer of, um, working with black bears and trapping black bears and, and, um, they are super big babies too, oddly. And, and so when I did the only one black bear painting I have done, um, and I was really careful to make, you know, sure that they were, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like Yogi, you know, like super cute but it wasn't also this ferocious scary thing that it's just this you know but not sort of a benign benign character um one of the largest of you know our forests but certainly not something to be terrified of or whatever and just kind of magnificent in its own way so yeah i try do try to i guess say i try to be respectful of of that of all of them but mm -hmm. that's just me right yeah i love it um, so kind of, kind of a fast pivot, but, um, so I have had the pleasure of being in one of your workshops and, um, we did, um, which one was it? It was the pursuit of happiness that we covered in the one, wow. that I, in one of the ones I got to go to. Um, and it was, it was fun, obviously, but also it was just, um, teaching just feels so like natural for you. Like it just, um, you know, like you're just kind of having a conversation and demonstrating. And it was just like, it was such an easy class. Like we were tack tackling something kind of, you know, it was a big raven and peacock feathers. And like, I feel like that's like, can be kind of intimidating because there's so many different colors in raven feathers and everything. Like there's just a lot going on, but it was fun and it was kind of easy. And um, I'm just wondering if you like always knew that you wanted to go into teaching as well or like how that rolled out. Um, you know, I, I don't really remember. I think, I think because I was doing something so weird, um, with not weird, but you know, I, because I had taken color pencil and I'd thrown all this stuff into it. And then the work itself was kind of shooting off in its own direction. It, it became an anomaly enough that people were like, I want to, I want to know like what's going on over there. Um, and so I, and I guarantee you somebody would have come up to me and said, Hey, would you like to teach? Cause it's never going to be me going, I'd like, you know, I'm chicken. I'm a bit chicken. Just like the book deal happened. You know, I didn't go looking for it. Things always just sort of have to like come to me. So I don't know that I ever thought about teaching. Um, and I'm sure, it, and I'm, I know it terrified me at the beginning. Um, and it's a lot harder than I thought it would be because you have to, you have to think about everything you do. Um, 
you know, because when you're just working in the studio, you just, you just, it's odd, but you're just kind of, you know, your left brain does, does kind of, kind of check out a little bit and you're just working off of into, there's a lot of intuitive things you do and you don't realize you're doing them. And, you know, sometimes it's just like you're, you know, you're, you're, you're flipping your pencil and rolling it and because you're keeping the sharp, you know, it, mm -hmm. but you don't think about it. You just do it. And so when you teach, you've got to think about all those little, all those little things are important. Um, and if you're a teacher that wants your students to succeed and to, and to feel like to not to, to break through any frustrations of, because there's always frustrations in learning something new. It's, it is always, if I go and take a class in something new, um, I'm just like any of my students that are doing things for the first time. It's, you want to end up with this masterpiece at the end of the class, but you know, that's not realistic and that's not why you're there, but you still can't help feeling that way. And, um, so if you want your students to really succeed, you've got to break down your process so thoroughly. Um, and when you're, I mean, when you're working in color pencil and you're basically you're, I'm breaking down watercolor, I'm breaking down ink and I'm breaking down color pencil. So I'm actually tearing down multiple medias instead of one. Um, uh, but it, yeah, so it just evolved. And I, 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 God, I can't even think, I, I was thinking about it the other day, like how many people have I taught over the years? I can't even, I can't even imagine. Cause I, I, it's just, I've done it and I don't do it a lot, but over the course of all these years and all the traveling and teaching and out of state and all of that, I don't know. And, and I don't know. I knew, I knew what I didn't want to be as a teacher, having taken classes where I was like, Ooh, um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of money to just come and not, you know, it just, and it's always frustrating when you take a class from somebody that has a, an amazing skill set, but just is not a great teacher. And so it was, it was, it was helpful to know like what I, I basically looked at it. Like if I'm a student, if I'm my own student, what do I want out of this class? And, um, and that's what I framed how I teach, um, as far as just being full disclosure, um, approachable, down to earth, regular ass person. Um, <laughs> but, and that's just, how, it's just, that's what's worked for me. And, you know, maybe it doesn't work for all the students, but certainly, um, my, my only goal as a teacher is just to make sure that people leave with an, a greater understanding of what they're doing and, um, and had a good time and surprise themselves with what they were able to do. Um, because I do, I, I know it's, I know it's scary to, to go, you know, I love that work. I love that person's work. I want to take a class, but I'm scared because I don't think I'm good at X. And so to be brave enough to, 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 to say, I'm registering, I'm going to take that class. I'm going to show up and still feel, um, you know, unsure of myself for two days, you know, I'm going to show up and make sure they, 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 at the end of that, they, they're happy and they, they understand and they learn some stuff and, they can, do, they can go like that. Yeah. I love that you pointed out too, that you might not, that they might not walk out with a finished piece. Cause I do think that that, um, yeah. that is something that a lot of the, um, you know, like the paint and sip, nothing wrong with paint and sip, but you know what I mean? Like, like you're not, oh, so you're not doing it. the same thing. <laughs> that's a whole nother. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like people yeah. walk in and they want it and they think that they're going to leave with this, with the masterpiece yeah. in four hours. And that's just not realistic. And, yeah. um, and so in, and that reminded me in your class, it's been a few years now that, um, I definitely did not finish like at all, um, before I left, but the way that you taught, um, what you taught, like, like I still, I still can, I still do sometimes like work in that medium in the way that you showed me. And I was able, I think it took me like three weeks to go home and finish the the piece that we did in um, the class. And, but because of what you taught during that class, like it was, I don't know, the way that you break it down, it just was, it was just was matter of fact, it was very simple. There was nothing foofy about it. It wasn't just like, well, if you're born with the gift, it was just like, <laughs> oh, here's what we're going to do. And this is how you do it. And it yeah. just like, like, I don't know. I, I just, um, do you have a really great, like matter of fact way of teaching that is, um, it just makes it applicable to all the things afterwards. Yeah, I hope so. And yeah, it, it is, a, it's not a fast medium. Uh, you know, it's colored pencil. It's not fast. It's, that would be the worst, like paint and soap class in the world. Like, let's do color pencil. <laughs> I, it, you could be drawing a grape in color pencil and it's, it just takes a long time, but, um, it's faster this with this method. And I, I don't, I mean, I always tell students, I, I don't finish a piece in two days. I, I don't finish a piece in the weekend. I don't care how small it is. Um, so, but it's always surprising because there's 
because every you know you get a student you get a group of people together and there are some people that are super zippy and they can just like cook and then there's um people more wired like me that are just like you know it's hard it's hard yeah it's hard to it's hard to you know manage a group of people with those you know like the let's hurry up and move to the next thing and these people are just feeling stressed out so you have to kind of um everybody's very different uh, but i think if you're color penciling um you know having a little bit more of a meditative you know personality it suits you because that's what it's about you just gotta you know zone out very zen yeah very, yeah, zen. very zen. <laughs> good word so um in your teaching because like you said like you've been teaching for a while now and you've taught like so many people in the pacific northwest and even you've traveled a little bit for teaching too haven't you yeah no i've hit um i've taught in canada for a really long time and um and then i just kind of travel teach for um you know, so it, it, which has been fun. You know, I go to, I've gone to Chicago and I've gone to Ohio and uh, Kentucky and all over and then California and all, you know, it's, it's fun. Everybody's different, but you know, um, as it's weird, it's weird climate wise. Cause then you, I, you know, things dry different when I'm like, when uh -huh. I'm down in Southern California, I'm doing watercolors and I'm like, I'm going to need some hair dryers for the class. And everybody's like, what, what? And then you get down there and you go, Oh yeah, <laughs> you don't need a hair dryer. Stuff's going to dry up here. You know how we, yeah, yeah. In yep. Washington, you know, it's like, yeah, or we'll get to that next zone as soon as it dries. But um, yeah, so I've 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 been you know all over, and um, it's fun. I I still hear from those people and see the work they're doing. It's and I love how they you know taken it and done their own thing with it. So mm -hmm. It's super cool. So um, so with your experience, like kind of getting to just do things in you know here and there locations, depending on where you can secure a space. What um, what started the whole adventure with black barn studio like yeah. this huge exciting like <clears throat> right it, it's, been in my, it, it's been in my head for a long time and um i and i it's weird because again i'm not like a natural born teacher so to speak um i like to i mean i like to t i and i i won't be i still will only teach a few times a year because it, it exhausts me a little bit because i put so much into it um, and there are people on this that walk the surf that are like um, superhumans that can teach every day, and they they just you know feed off of that. And God love them. And I've found my my little um, herd of them to bring into Black Barn for that. Um, but I just I I don't know as much as a hermit as I feel like I've kind of always been and like being, you know, because as an artist you kind of have to embrace your inner hermit i mean you do your best work you can't it's not a group project it, you know you you work alone you're you know there's some part of me that obviously um was, i was missing that sort of collaborative um interaction that you get around other creatives you know and i and again it's like with the work and not realizing i had a theme in the work i was clearly searching for that to fill that void in some capacity and so um in my head i was like oh I'm gonna, you know maybe someday i'll do this thing and when i don't want to travel and do the um, the show circuit maybe as much i can have this little home base that um and in hot now that it's getting closer and you know things are coming together um i i think well it's it's almost it's almost like that missing feeling of you know when i was searching for you know, what am I going to do for, with my life? And I can't be an artist. There's no, you know, whatever. It's like the atelier's training thing has now come full circle and it's going to be like here. And I can actually, you know, do the things where I felt like there was a gap in my education, like the, like we're starting the life drawing sessions and um, always felt like that was a gap, you know, doing figurative work is not really ever fixed into, to my, to what I do. And I, I feel like that's like potentially the next direction is, we, you know, kind of putting people into work here and there, but I've got to, my skill set needs to, to get there, you know? So this is like, you know, can't get around it if it's right in your, your own backyard. So I don't know. I, I think, uh, I, I was, I went to, I had some, I had coffee with a friend of mine last, a great friend that was talking about this. And she said, I, I think I must, she says, I, I think I'm a social introvert. That was the first time I'd ever really heard that. And I thought, um, you know, um, thank you, Ashley, for that. I, I think I am a, like that. I'm a social introvert. I have a 
mostly just kind of a hermit, mostly just kind of say to myself, but there's parts of me that want to um, have that interaction and with other like-minded people. Mm -hmm. And so I'm super looking forward to a space that um, where we can all, you know, work independently and work on our things, but still be able to pick our head up and go, Hey, <laughs> what do you think's going on here? <laughs> What's wrong with this? What are you What's doing wrong with this? <laughs> you know, and, um, uh, and the energy, the learning energy, and, um, learning from people like, um, uh, like certainly, um, you know, Derek Gundy being involved is like beyond great. Um, just talk about a superstar teacher and the, kind of can teach anything which is so annoying and and James Andrews as well with his coming in with his truly with his atelier background and having just completed that program um it's like this weird like who gift from god that that uh all of this stuff is kind of fell on my lap um as it you know is coming to a head and the building's actually here you know so um, so I think that's, I don't, that I, I, that's all I can say. I, it's like this weird hand that said, you know, someday you should build the space. It's like Noah's Ark. Here we are. And, you know, so, yeah. So hopefully I'm ho really hoping for a cool vibe in there and, um, and a lot of, you know, collaboration and camaraderie in a, in a, in a, typically in a career of, you know, permit situations. So. Yes. Well, and like, so I, f I feel like kind of like you said earlier, like finding that atelier when you were younger, like it's really hard to find without just going to art school, which a lot of people can't do because of schedule, because of price or whatever. Um, it's really hard to find like a place where you can learn and improve your skills. Like there's, you know, there's this nonprofit over here and there's this gallery over here and this person might be renting out a public space at the community center. And it's like all of these piecemeal things and it's still really helpful, but it's like, it's so chaotic and hard to find all of those things and put your own education together without yes. like just so much time. And so I feel like it scares a lot of people from seeking that out. And um, you've touched on it just a couple of times in our talk here where like you are a professional artist and you're still seeking out, you're still going to workshops and you're still learning more to refine oh. your skills yeah. and it's important to do. And so like, having a, a space where you've like created this big, beautiful space where it's like one location, you know, like people can yeah. out it's in Kingston, it's gorgeous there, like find a lovely place to stay there. And all, all through the year, there's going to be workshops that are going to improve what you do. Yeah. Something I, especially for, I mean, we're, there's a lot of um, artist types out here, you know, and, Indy Nola and Bainbridge Island and Kingston and North Kitsap all around everywhere. But, you know, to really get good classes, we had to always go, you know, um, you had to go to Seattle or you had to go out and away um, to get kind of the, that more solid coursework, you know, mm -hmm. there's certainly classes, but to get some really good coursework of like, you know, I want to learn figure drawing or whatever. And so um, I, I love having that, ability to bring that into this area um and take away that whole like well we have to you know it's going to be a full day event because we got to truck over on the ferry and get up to get up to gauge or wherever we're going to go and um so i i really hope you know that we we put together a, you know a program that allows people to do that that certainly you know it's gonna it's it it's just launching and you know it's going to drive itself it's going to create its own destiny or whatever you want to call it like Luke, i am your father um <laughs> it will do its own thing um uh, and but i i just you know i i want to have it's not all about drawing and painting it's you know there's it's it's lino cuts it's a lot of different art forms you know there's probably sculpt there's going to be some sculpture courses there's so i i just want to have a all a, of a, kind of a wide array of of choices of, of classes to take, but taught by people that really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's not super narrow that way. I, I like the idea of like, you know, get a, get a like gangster weaver coming in to come in and teach that, you know, like anybody that's a, a, a crafts person doing that, doing a, a bang up job with it is kind of what I'm looking for. So, but yeah, it, it's, I just think the community of it, it, it will be, 
and like you say, Kingston's lovely. The farm is lovely. And so to have it, have a classes in a, that kind of weird, you know, it's different setting than I've ever taught at for sure. You know? So yeah, hopefully that'll also feed into it. So. And part of the reason that you wanted to build this was also so that you could have your critters on the property with you while you're working, right? Like you have your two yeah, horses. Yeah, and that was part of it. That was part of why I got the property in the first place was so I'd have a place to put the horses. So they're there. And then once you get property, then you start like collecting more. Yeah. So there's there's more coming down the pike as we speak with that because, you know. Yeah, you know, at that point it's like, well, I can't travel now. I got horses, so why not get a whole bunch of stuff? So. <laughs> but yeah, but the, you know, we built the floor really strong in there in the barn, so we can just like come in with, um, uh, you know, you can just walk the whole. We'll walk that big draft horse right in the middle of the room and say, "Here, we're gonna let draw on this." Or, yeah, right. Can, that would be just, a great yeah. time. Yeah, for sure. So I also love the idea of just like being in kind of a tough workout and or workout uh, workshop and then needing needing a little <laughs> break and then just going out and like petting a baby goat or a, mental or break. a pony and yeah, like mental break. Yeah. To come back. Yeah. To it. Or yeah, the baby goat. We don't know. Again, they'll, they'll probably be in the, in the space more than out. But but yeah, so yeah, being on a farm and then also having the like the woods to go kind of walk through the woods and clear your brain or um, or grab some stuff to draw i mean i don't know it's 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 gonna it's gonna be a it's a different vibe i've taught in one there was one place i taught down in oregon called sika sika center and it was similar and that it was out in this really remote kind of place with the woods and very kind of natural but most of the time you know you you're teaching in either an urban environment or you're um at a hotel guest you know room or whatever mm -hmm. and so this will be nice to have like a little bit of um a both little serenity serenity now and then you know go back in and stress yourself out with learning so yep <laughs> unless unless you're doing unless you're doing the um color pencil class because then that's zen so yeah that's zen know. inherently zen <laughs> yes <laughs> so um can you tell me why the barn is black oh yeah i, I would dare the first thing i said derek asked me that too and then the first thing i said is like black like my soul and he's like you know have to get a better answer than that but <laughs> Um, I do love that. I do love black look. I just love the look of it, but it, it's sort of like, it has this physical and then this metaphorical reason. It's weird, but physically the black barn is you can take and you, and as soon as we got it painted, I, it, that this proved that I was right the whole time. Cause there's always that moment. Like, what if you're not right? But <laughs> wait, you can take that barn and I can, I can, if I can take like a, 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 red pot a red glazed garden pot and i can put it right in front of the wall of the barn and then i can put this like right little fern in the pot and you know on, on most buildings you know it's it's cute and so it's there or whatever but there's something about the black of that barn or the black in general that allows those things to kind of shine on their own right it really it really falls back and says, you know, allows itself to kind of pull back and disappear and create a backdrop. So that thing, um, that pot or that and that chartreuse fern just pop off. And, and it's all about that, right? Um, just just the nature of black. And um, so that's the there's that physicality of that. And I think it it carries over in my brain as metaphorically as like this space, this black barn, this, it's going to do, I, I hope that it does that for people. Um, it's there, it's, it's there to um, put us all together and, and bring all this information and all this sharing of knowledge and, and allow people to come in and, and kind of soak that in and, and really shine on their own. And, and so they'll, they'll become the little red pot with the fern in it. You know, the barn will be there to sort of, uh, to really take those people and say, you know, look what they can do and what they were afraid to try and where they, you know, what they're doing now. So that was, that was sort of the, the woo woo version of, of why black, why black barn. Um, that's, I just, that's how I felt like it, it was, a, it needed the strength and the, but not take all the, I, it's not there to take all the glory. It's there to shine that on what's around it basically. I love that. Yeah. I also feel like that means that there's probably going to be some really fun, like, you know, stepping back at the end of the workshop and like holding all the work next to each other, like outside, you know, next to the Yeah, barn. no, it, it would be perfect out there too. Again, it's like this, it's, it's just this 
big long wall of yeah dark um yeah i think that that'll be a fun little like all those little fun traditions you know that you can create when you're starting something of like this is what we do yeah uh, this first night we always have pizza and then at the end we do this little <laughs> thing and we um but yeah it's it's nice to you know it'll be nice to have those things start up over all that tradition and it certainly would um yeah you could definitely you can definitely see a lot of stuff against a big black wall let me just say that <laughs> now that I've got them, I'm like, whoo, okay, that's black. So, I bet it looks really cool in the setting too, like with the trees and everything around it. And yeah. I bet it's like a presence. It's very, it does. It's, it's, um, you know, for a long time I was calling it the Death Star because it's like, you know, they, they, the, in the house too, they both are very, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they're, they're strength, but they're quiet. It's a quiet, strong strength to them. So, um, hopefully in, it's an inviting, it'll be an inviting space. Yeah. It, it sits in its environment. feels good in there. So I can't wait to see it in person. Yeah, I know. So, um, when will people get their first opportunity to visit? We are set to grand open on November 10th, uh, through the 12th. That weekend is, um, it's also, it's coinciding with art in the woods tour, which is like an annual studio tour here in North Kitsap. Um, and I believe there's usually 20 to 22 studios in that tour. It's pretty big. It's a lovely tour because it really is in studios, you know, as some, sometimes studio tours slip a little bit and you end up going to like, not really an actual working studio. So this mm -hmm. one's lovely. And that it is, you know, you get to get to peruse through, you know, people's underwear drawer. I mean, you're like in the studio. Um, so we're going to grand open on that weekend. Um, and we thought, 12 artists, me included, 12 artists in there across um, all the mediums, which is nice because we've got glass and metal and textile and painters and potters and jewelers. And, um, so it'll be fun. Good food, too. I, a friend mm -hmm. of mine, Ariel, is the, kind of this master at making good nosh. So, so we'll have some good snacks, which is always. You know, and we'll have olive. So for those that know olive, that's that's a draw in itself. Which but, is um, not a food. She's a really cute dog. Yeah. Okay. Don't eat um, yeah. She'll have different sweaters every day. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's our grand opening. And then we're going to kind of pull back for a little bit in this, in the sense of it and get geared up for 2024. Um, I'll do the first class in, in January, the 13th and 14th is, is sort of the first class in the barn. Um, and then we'll just kind of go from there. Hopefully, uh, well, no, we will by November 10th, we'll have, um, sort of the 2024 class roster being built out so people can look and see what's getting offered. And um, hopefully there'll be something that strikes a fancy with them. Um, we've got some really great people so far that are, um, you know, looking at the lino cut class. I'm, I'm super looking forward to for myself because um, I've always wanted to dabble with lino. And, um, and then of course, Derek with his watercolor and uh, James Andrews is going to do sort of a mini atelier with, um, drawing from the bard cast and then drawing from life, which is again, really good skills just for anybody that's trying to get some, you know, it's kind of those things you got to know the rules before you can break the rules. Mm -hmm. And so learning them and then, you know, it's just a great way to build. Um, so yeah, we're looking, looking ahead to all of that and, um, and, you know, looking to find other teachers always willing to get that info too. So yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I think, I think the community will drive whatever this ends up being more than anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Will um, any of the teaching artists for 2024, will they be at Art in the Woods um, on display? Not displaying per se, but um, Derek and Derek Gundy and James Andrews will be there. James will be there. I don't know if he's going to come on Friday or Saturday, but he'll actually be there and do some demonstration, which will be fun. Cool. do some um drawing from life which i'm super stoked about um and then of course i'll be there um but that that's the, the extent of that and then we'll see next year you know next year will be different we're gonna have spaces in there that people can rent um to because i had that happen in my history too where i was working from home and i needed more space and it was a time mm -hmm. it needed to work away from home because my my ability to manage myself wasn't great at home. Um, and so I, I was lucky enough to find a space to rent and did that. And so I'm going to, I'm, we're going to have a few spaces like that in there. And uh, so if we end up doing that, then those people will probably be 
a part of Art in the Woods next year as we go forward. So that's amazing too, because that's really hard to find. I'm actually like in that same boat right now because I have small yeah. children and I'm trying to like work in just a room in my house. And it's like, this is not, it's this tough. Isn't... <laughs> it's tough. You don't want to have to put it all away at the end of the, you know. Exactly. It's... Yeah. It's so, it's so hard. So, um, so yeah, I've, um, and I'm very far from you. So otherwise I would totally be like, me, I need to rent a space, me. But, um, pick me, pick me. yeah, yeah okay. no, I would, I know. Well, like I say, we're working on that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, having that space. And again, that's part of that, that community and that collaborative thing is to have that, um, you know, other people working in there and be able to kind of feed off each other because it doesn't seem to matter. Like if, if somebody's a potter or somebody's a weaver or somebody's whatever, there's always some portion of what they do or um or how they think that I can drag into my work. And um it's odd, but it always works that way. So um it'll be it'll be really it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what changes I see in my own work going forward in this space too. So yeah. Yeah. What an exciting thing. That's yeah. just so I big. Know. <laughs> super scared now i have to just yeah learn how to run a whole another business like i'm so good at this business thing it's like why am i doing this to myself well just but, like your artwork that's what you like your little characters that's what all the collaboration is for and yes, and yes. The light work, we're all carrying a different little fruit yeah. and a twig and a you know. shiny object and, and a <laughs> yeah. that you know I'm, I'm i'm gonna look at it that way that's a good way to look at it i i really am lucky with the that community of people so I'm yeah. already very happy about that. So we're, yeah, it's going to be a good group. Awesome. Well, um, everybody, if you want to get to see it for yourself, um, she said art in the woods, November 10th through the 12th. Um, you'll have a chance to go and see it in person. And then I believe, um, are some workshops already available on your website to sign up for? Yeah, mine is up there and it's getting full. If it does fill up, I'm going to just throw another one in. I think to, to take the overflow. Um, so yeah, mine's up there in January 13th and 14th. That one's open. Um, intro to watercolor with Derek is a one day and that's up there now. Um, there's a two day with James Anders. that's up there as well. And there's a two day Derek more intensive watercolor class that are up there. Yeah. Awesome. And, um, before art in the woods, I'm sure we'll have more of them up there too. So, yeah. So go take a peek. Um, they're probably going to fill up kind of fast. So um, check out blackbarnfineartstudio.com um, to sign up for classes before <laughs> before things uh, fill up there. And um, and yeah, keep following along because more is going to more is going to come up. And yeah. it's just exciting. It is. Yay. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, sitting and chatting with me, Eileen. Um, we got some more. We're going to try and do some more interviews as time goes on with different instructors that are coming through. So we can just kind of keep everyone in the know about what's coming up with. the. Oh, yeah. You're going to love those guys. Those guys are great. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Savannah. Thank you.